Hey everybody, welcome into this week's episode of Tony's Spot on Fishing. I'm your host, Tony Krizek, and today we're finally getting around to answering a, a request we've been getting quite a bit over the last couple seasons, and that's the fish of the DuPage River. Our first adventure out here filming, we're going to be on the West Branch, hitting a lot of areas around Naperville and Warrenville, Illinois. We're going to show you all the tips, tricks, and techniques of how we can catch smallies out here on the DuPage River. That's all this week on Tony's Spot on Fishing. we're fishing today we're actually right pretty much in the, the heart of downtown Warrenville here just off of Warrenville Road right near the the uptown cap and a couple other places right around here and we like to fish this whole stretch we can actually fish it from the bridge here all the way down to the to the old schoolhouse and what we're looking for is little deeper pockets that we're going to find you know, the West Branch versus the East Branch on the Deep Lake River, the West Branch is a lot more shallower. Um, the East Branch has more depth. The West Branch has a little more rock to it. The East Branch is a little smoother. So they, they're kind of two totally different rivers. But what we do is basically we walk around and we're just looking for these little pockets or these little washouts, these little holes. And they may do nothing more than where you're going from ankle deep or calf deep to knee deep. Sometimes even maybe you find a spot on your hip. But these little washouts, little pockets, that's what we're looking for. You can attack them with a, a handful of different baits. You can throw a crankbait through it, a shallow diving crankbait, a jerk bait, be it hard or soft plastic, or even just a jig and grub or jig and gulp minnow. Either of those combinations will work well. Not a lot of current flow on this particular day, so I mean nothing if you're going to throw a jig, nothing over an eighth of an ounce. A lot of guys will even run a sixteenth out here because it is super shallow water and we don't want to snag up in the rocks. But just bounce around, hit these holes, fish them with a crank, fish them with a plastic, see where the fish are sitting and exactly what they want. That's the best way to attack it when you're, when you're fishing any part of the West Branch that you can do. It. switch here went down to Warren Grove oh he came off we went down to Warren Grove our first spot wasn't pulled up and they said we need to find a little more depth this area around Warren Grove has a little bit more to it and this first spot right here the old washout of where the old dam used to be um, is actually right in front of it. There's a little deep hole right here. And as soon as we got in the water, right from the kayak access point, I noticed right away there was a nice little slope, and I said, you know, I'm going to fix my crankbait out and just back again that depth. And sure enough, right in this hole, we were able to contact the fish. Oh yeah, nice small right there. 
See if this one will stay hooked up. Put that new treble hook on there, a little bit bigger on the back end. Far so good. Come here. Come here. Let's take a look at you. Just slipped off at the last second, Ozzy. There we go. <laughs> now, ironically enough, it was that middle or the front treble hook that actually got that fish, but that's okay. Oh, man. We go through all that just for losing up for one on that. But, nevertheless, that's three smallies here now that we've contacted. And they're sitting right on the edges of these this hole. Basically, what I'm noticing is there's a funnel pattern here to the old dam. And what we're actually doing is casting off towards, we have some chunk rock there, and it's still right on the edge of that deep pool, and it's almost like a, a mini current break. And that's where these three smallies have all came from. It was right in through this stretch. So these are areas, not only do you want the deeper hole, but also still look for areas where you can get out of that current a little bit, too. So just looking at it, throwing well into the middle of the hole, I'm having to retrieve that bait a little faster to keep up with the current, because while the dam has been taken out, there's still what we would classify as like an earthen dam, which will actually still push water through don't have the big dam wall here. So there's still some current running through it, but these fish will sit on the outside edges of these holes, and we can just run that crank right off these edges of the holes at a little slower pace and get them to react. And that clacker on that clacking crank just really admits uh, a sound that, you know, is very unique. So it's not quite the deep thump of that one knocker of a one knocker style bait that's not the baby grab so we can run the shape So this gives us a very unique sound, a lot of flash and vibration. I'll tell you these black and gray, not the most the Fox River, but here we are in the DuPage River. And three fish on them. Right in front of me again. After losing those first three, my goodness, there we go. The first one to my hand isn't a too bad of a fish. Come on, give me my hook back. First time, I still ended up losing that one. But there we go, there's a nice little guy there. That looks like a little male. The other three were a little bit better size in this hole. We're gonna go ahead and scoop her right back in. There she goes. But these fish, again, are sitting right on the edges where these humps and, and holes are at. So that seems to be what we need to find, where we can get little current breaks right on the edges of these holes. That's where they're, they're sitting. And again, we're just running that Rapala Platinum Crank, the old rusty craw color, little gold flash, especially when we have the overcast skies like we do today. That's where I really prefer having something with a little gold to it versus a, a nickel or silver. So we're going to keep at it. That's action from a fourth smallie in just this one little spot. We'll see if there's any more in this hole and keep working our way down. All right, we're changing things up here, folks. And it's been probably two, three weeks since we've been able to finish filming this DuPage River show. We started out in Warrenville, fishing Warrenville Grove, and we've just had so much rain and, and weird weather patterns that it's made it impossible due to flooding 
high water strong currents to get back there. So we had to change it up. When Mother Nature changes it, we're going to change with it and adapt, and that's what we're doing. We're out here in the Plainfield Joliet area of Hamill Woods, just off of Route 59. It's the east branch of the DuPage River. We're going to show you all the tips, tricks, and techniques of how we can catch fish down here on this end of the Duke. start it off here. First cast over at Hamel here. We did a little switcheroo and we're leaving that west branch alone. We came on down to the east branch down here in the Shorewood area of Hamel Woods. That is a good sign when you can pop one on the first cast like that. Get him untangled with all this. That nice little smallie. Little guy, but a good way to start it off. I'll tell you what, we're still flinging crankbaits just like we were on the west branch. We're just doing it here on the east branch. We're going to show you all the tips, tricks, and techniques how we do things down here. Little guy again. And that one just sucked it in on me. That first one crushed it pretty good. That's another little guy here. Let's go ahead and try and find some of the big girls that we usually catch down here. I'll tell you what, we've got rough conditions today. Another front, go figure, more rain coming through here. So we apologize for some of the quick cuts here that we have to do, but we have to be cautious of our equipment, our camera crews. But again, we're not drying out, so we just have to deal with the elements out here in a nice, hard rain that we got going on so we're making the best of a bad situation that's for sure this is a better one here folks oh yes look at this football folks <laughs> All right, battling the elements out here at Hamel Woods, down around Shorewood. And I'll tell you what, this is fun. Just a few casts, and we've already popped three fish. We'll explain in a little bit here exactly how we're catching these fish in the area we're throwing into. And again, we're just battling the elements. But there is a nice, chunky smallmouth here for the DuPage River. That's spot on fishing right there. Let's go ahead and get her back. And away she goes! Ha <laughs> ha! Another big smallie. Come here, sweetheart. Come here, you stay buttoned up now. Look at that one. Woo! Now that one, folks, I had just hit a little rock out there. And as soon as I bumped that rock, I gave it a little twitch. And she just crushed it. Woo! That is another great smallie. Look at that thing. Look at the belly on him. Holy cow. That thing. Nice female there. We're going to go ahead and make sure we get her back nice and safe. But folks, this is just an unbelievable fishery. If you thought Fox River smallies were fun, I'm telling you what, the DuPage River is a nice, quiet little secret for some of these big smallies. And away she goes. Battling the elements, but we're catching them. 
this little area to reload. Just a little split shot in the crawler and a little hook and lo and behold you'll catch these little rock bass. They're not big but they're feisty little guys. And literally it's just a couple split shots maybe about eight to ten inches or so right above our, our hook with a piece of crawler. And you'd be surprised how many smallies will hit this uh, setup as well. But there are a lot of rock bass and there's bigger bluegills in the DuPage River. And like I say, the smallies will hit this just as well. But it's another little thing to do while you're waiting for your little area to reload to get them back on right? Pretty red eyes on those guys. Oh, look at that, his tail's a little little beat up there. Kind of weird. Oh, we might have had a little run in with a northern pike. There are some pike in the river. You know, around like the Lamont area, they tend to hang out down there more. But you never know, know what you're going to find in this stretch. like to do out here um, is wade this area. But unfortunately, just due to the, the high water and the extreme currents that are still present, it's just not safe to be, be wading out here. Oh, the, uh, the area here that we're pitching our, our crankbaits in and even our little crawler, just a little slack water area here from the dam to the uh, what is the submerged rock bottom. Now, generally speaking, generally speaking, what we like to do is wait out and push the back side of that rock bottom. Unfortunately, due to the conditions, we're just not able to. So rather than, than chance it, what we're doing is, is just staying on land. As you can see, we can still pitch crankbait. The dam has got the rough current up near the wall. It's almost too much to even pitch the crankbait into. But right in front of me, there's a little wall and a little washout. And then it hits that submerged rock hump that's out there. And then it really starts booking again. So in this little washout, it's just a little bit of slack water. And it's they're sitting in here. It's up here, rock bass, the, the small leaves you take. So you just got to take what Mother Nature gives you, really. So now it's really kind of weird. You know, you think about it, when you're throwing crankbaits and spinnerbaits, whoop, got a bite. Yep. When we're throwing crankbaits and spinnerbaits out on Lake Geneva or even Lake Michigan, you think about how many rock bass we catch. You know, it's very rare that I, I've caught a rock bass on a moving here. I'm sure there are guys that have, that little guy. But a lot of times if I'm fishing a, a jig and twister tail or a jig and a gulp minnow, obviously like the split shot crawler. It seems like there's so many more rock holes out here that way and they just don't really react to the moving bait like they do on other bodies of water. But all we're doing, we're just pitching it out just, you know, shortly off the wall here. And we just kind of lift it up, let the current drift it down. And just keep a feel for it. You know, integrate some pauses into it. Like I said, it's not uncommon to catch smallies out here this way either. But we just wanted to showcase another little something that you can do due to the conditions that we're facing right now with the high water and the rough current. You know, it kind of limits us to our spots. We pop four smallies right away off that area, kind of letting that area reload a little bit so we can go around and pitch a crawler catch a rock over two and like I say who knows might even get a smaller. 
lot of guys will come down just on the, the back side of where my cameraman is standing. There's a little creek that enters in. And the other day, I was out here just pre-fishing before filming. And uh, we had caught a couple smallies that day, but there was another gentleman out here just fishing a wax worm under a bobber and just brushing some big bluegill. I mean, it was surprising just how big they were. Run the light action rods. They're a blast. The rod I'm actually using for this is a custom rod. And uh, it used to be an old fly rod that we have converted into a spinning rod. And it is a blast for panfish. Oh, nice little rock bass there. They got a lot of spunk, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what, what we're going to do right now is go ahead and get back to slinging a crankbait. We're going to see just exactly if we can get another smaller or two to go. Let's talk briefly just about how we're, we're fishing these cranks out here in Hamble Woods. Because being on shore like this, we're not able to always throw up current. We're actually going to be throwing a lot of cross current. And we can still kind of fan cast this little pool that I have in front of me. We can throw right down the edge where the, the fast water right off the dam hits this little wall, this little slack pool. And we can fan it to where it starts to pick up again. Now, anytime we're going to be throwing more down current, per se, where we're going to try to fish that other edge, because we're coming against the current, we're going to slow the retrieve down quite a bit. If we try to do a normal retrieve, we're going to be just blowing that crankbait out when it's running against the current. So I'll run a little bit slower coming back up versus how we're doing it straight across or if I can angle up current a little bit. Anytime we bump a little piece of structure, rock or tree limb, We'll just give that rod tip a quick little snap like that and it just blows up what's on the bottom there makes a little cloud gives the bait a different reaction it's going to dart off and a lot of times that'll trick the strikes now this area does have weed growth to it so the crankbait bite is going to get harder and harder as time goes on here as we get further into the later part of spring and into the early summer so we're going to not be able to fish a crank as effectively in here with all the weeds that are going to be around. And what we like to do, and we'll definitely come back out here and, and fish this pattern for you when we're able to safely wade the area and, and talk more about it in the warmer months. But we'll fish a, a Zoom Superfluid that time of year, weedless, as a jerk bait over those weeds. And we can always get fish called that way. But for right now, we can still run a crankbait through this area. And it, it's the best bet. It's the best bet. And again, shallow diving crank stuff that's going no more than three feet. Square bills, of course. And of course, our personal favorite here on Spot on Fishing is Romo Paula, that clacking crank. There's just something about it that gets these fish going. Well, hey, everybody. That's about all the time we have for this week. That's going to wrap up our, our DuPage River springtime edition here of Tony Spot on Fishing how we can catch some smallies both on the west branch and the east branch of the duper. Kind of a lot of similarities to both of them. You know, one area has more vegetation than the other does. One area has more rock and mud, of course, than the other does. But we hope we shed some light on just how good this river system can be for the smallmouth down here. And be it the east branch or west branch, or even if you guys are going back to the Fox River, always use extreme caution when wading and, and your surroundings and always be prepared for the unthinkable that could happen. But we are not done with the DuPage River. We, of course, will be back. We're going to show you how we can wade it safely in, in the summer months, and we'll show you how we can catch fish on that super fluke as well out here. So we're just getting started with the weather being what it was. That's starting to pour again, so we're wrapping it up. That's it, everybody. We'll see you next week on Tony's Spot on Fishing.